So this is what I want to talk about today. Liars. I want to start out this message today by sharing with you a very powerful statement in my opinion. And I want you to listen to this statement very well. When you have told so many lies on top of each other over the centuries that telling the truth about one of your earlier lies would unravel all the lies that have been piled on top of it thus exposing you for what you are you have no choice but to continue to lie when your ability grab this now when your ability to maintain your privilege and control over other people's reality is based on the lies about who you are and who they are you absolutely cannot and must never tell the truth did y'all get that Let me say one more time, be sure it really digests in your viscera. When you've told so many lies over the centuries that telling the truth now about one of your earlier lies will unravel all the other lies that you've ever told. Thereby exposing you for what you really are. You have no choice but to continue to lie. When your ability to maintain privilege and control over other people is based on the lies about who you are and who they are, you absolutely cannot and must never tell the truth. Did y'all get what I just said? Brothers and sisters, what I just said is the description and the fact of our predicament as black people. We as black people have developed an appreciation and a love for the lie. that we have been dealing with for almost 3,000 years now. Brother Ray, why do you say 3,000 years? Because Africa was invaded millennia ago. Everybody repeat after me. I must always remember that the invader never allows the culture they invade to retain their identity. Are y'all getting this? I look at our great African culture which produced awesome monumental structures and colossals such as Hermetet. What did you just say, Brother Ray? Hermetet. That's the comedic term. You might know it as the Sphinx. This massive colossal that is at least 18,000 years old. 
How, how old did I just say? At least 18,000 years old. Now we got a problem. Let me deal with that for a moment. Because all of us were taught that Adam was the first man that ever lived on this planet. Were we taught that? In Genesis, the first chapter, 26 verse, and God said, let us make man in our image after all and so forth. And then God made him male and female and da-da-da-da-da. And by the way, the female in that verse is a lady called Lilith, not Eve. Lilith was Adam's first wife in the mythology. Yeah, don't take my word for it. Write it down. L-I-L-I-T-H, Lilith. We don't hear about Lilith because she doesn't fit the program of European male chauvinism. See, Lilith, in the story, and in the story, in the story, she didn't really exist, Adam didn't really exist either, but in the story, Lilith didn't want to submit to Adam because she let him know up front, God made you and I at the same time. God didn't take me out of your rib. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Some of you might not have never heard of Lilith before. It's okay. That's what we do here at the African Village. We tell you stuff you don't already know. If Adam was alive today, the oldest he would be would be about 7,000 years old. So if Adam would be only about 7,000 years old and there's this massive structure that's bigger than this building, right there on the Giza Plateau, known as what the Greeks called the Sphinx, who built it? Africans did. You see, brothers and sisters, this great African culture which produced structures like the Sphinx that had an awesome message to it that the invaders cannot understand. You see, the invaders went in and saw this massive structure with the head of an African man. Notice I said African man. That's why they blew the nose and lips off so y'all wouldn't know that. An African man with the body of a lion. So the European mind could not understand the message in that. So they started coming up with weird concepts and weird theories of half man, half animal, da 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 da, and tried to incorporate it in, in their media presentations. But that's not what Africans designed it to mean. What Africans designed it to mean is that in every last one of us there's an animal nature. And we must always be sure that our intellect rises above our animal nature. Instead of letting our animal nature control us like many of us have sunk to that level, we should always remember the message of Hermetiet to us. African warrior scholars who studied for years to prepare us for the battle of dealing with the lies from the liars. Siege. Chancellor Williams, I don't know how many of you guys have ever heard of him before, but he is the author of an awesome book called The Destruction of Black Civilization. He speaks volumes of the early dynasties of ancient Egypt. Now what's really deep about it is he talks about the dynasties of ancient Egypt where he calls forth the names of great Africans that we still call forth today such as Zosier, Imhotep, Sneferu, Khufu, Khafre, Menkade, we, these great African kings. By the way, look at somebody and say, if you only can go back to slavery in this country, you don't know our story. You see, we are in a month called Black History Month now. 
And the truth of the matter is, during this month, even a lot of churches now are telling their members it's okay to dress in African attire, but just for this month. Oh man, why did they give us the shortest month of the year to remember over 450,000 years of existence on this planet. How many years did I just say? Oh, yeah, y'all, we've been around for quite a while. In fact, how many of y'all have ever heard of the science called astrology? Anybody ever hear that before? Anybody hear of something called astronomy before? I don't know if you know the difference between the two, but astronomy is the study of the movement of the heavenly bodies. Astrology is learning how to govern your life by the movement of the heavenly bodies. You see, the liars have taught us that that's witchcraft. The liars have taught us that to learn the mastery of nature is not of God. But it's really deep because our ancient African ancestors for thousands of years knew when to plant their crops by the movement of the stars. They knew when to make love to conceive by the movement of the stars. They knew how to do everything they did by the movement of the stars. And it's really deep about it. Now grab how deep this goes. Y'all listening to me? Are you listening to me? Check how deep this goes. Whatever position the stars are in the sky tonight, tonight, it will take 25 thousand years for them to come back to this exact position that they are today. In other words, that's called, everybody say this, a stellar revolution. A stellar revolution takes 25,000 years. Are y'all grabbing what I'm saying? Are y'all hearing me? Now grab this. How many revolutions does it take for you to master the knowledge of the movement of the star? That ought to give you an idea of how long we've been around. We've been here for a while. Chancellor Williams lets us know, brothers and sisters, that these great Africans that I mentioned, Imhotep, Zoja, Sneferu, Kufru, Kafre, they and others established their sciences, their knowledge, when Ethiopia was in the zenith of its power. Oh my God. Kenya, Ethiopia, the Sudan. Are y'all getting this? Yes, this is where the Nilotic people came from and, and migrated down north. I didn't say down south. See, down south is thinking over here. But they migrated down north into what is called the Nile Valley or Egypt. And our ancestors knew, who's got a Hussein? Our ancestors knew, let me hold your Hussein right quick. Our ancestors knew that the day was coming that the invaders, the liars, would come and snatch away that which our people had for so long. So you know what they did? 
They built monuments to stand the test of time. While in the Nile Valley, after getting into the Nile Valley, they knew, and it's really deep because the book of Ipuer says, Lo, what the ancestors foretold has come to pass. Notice what the prophets of ancient times said about the liars. It says, the land is full of bands of evildoers and the plowman goes to plow with his shield. Faces are pale. In other words, the, the, Europe, the Indians call them pale face. They didn't belong in Africa. Faces are pale. The bowmen stand ready. Wrongdoing is everywhere and there is no man or woman of yesterday. He says the women are barren and none conceive. God does not make children anymore because of the state of the land. There's blood everywhere and no shortage of the dead. Indeed, the burial cloth cries out before one approaches it. Lo, the land turns like a potter's wheel. The robber has become rich. Are y'all getting this? Yes. And the honorable person has become a thief. Check this out. They actually prophesied. The foreigners from without have come to Egypt and the Egyptian of yesterday cannot be found anywhere. Behold now how greatly the people have changed. Now y'all hear this, hear this, because this is, even though this is thousands of years ago, we're still living this today. Behold now how greatly the people have changed. One who once did not sleep even on a box now owns a bed. Look at somebody and say, whose bed? Check this out. Those who once owned robes are now in rags. And those who once did not weave for themselves now own fine linen. Where'd they get it from? They stole it. Behold, check out this part. Those who once did not build boats now own ships. And the former owners just look at them for they are no longer there. Those who once lacked shelter. Why? Because they lived in the mountains. And don't take my word for it. Get you a good map and just look at Europe. And see a mountain range in Greece and Turkey area. You'll see the mountain range. Look on your map and you'll see that this mountain range is called the Caucasus Mountains. Caucasus. I'll say it again. Caucasus. Y'all know what word comes from that? Thank you. They're telling you where they came from. I, I forgot. I forgot to hold up my circle, but that's okay. I'm in it now. <laughs> those who once lacked shelter now have homes, and those who had homes are now in the blast of the storm. Now here's the last part I want to read on you. Check this out. Check this out. And those, now this is what our African ancestors wrote millennia ago. And those who knew nothing of God did not even have a God consciousness now make offerings to him with the incense of others. Liars. Dr. Ben, my first teacher in African consciousness, wrote a book entitled Africa, Mother of Western Civil Civilization and he explains how these awesome Nile Valley Africans better known as the descendants or children of Ethiopia were the people from the provinces of the motherland where people were blue black blue black 
I say that because there are many of us that's literally ashamed of our blackness. I remember when I was a little boy, my mother used to say this phrase, the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. I didn't know what she was talking about. But she knew that this thing in us called melanin that gives us our deep, beautiful, black, rich color is the elixir of God. My mom knew that this chemical, and she would, man, I tell you, she would just say that and she would just pray in her chocolateness. She knew she was beautiful. Brothers and sisters, it's one thing to lie. It's another to know the truth. But spawn even more lies. To buy time because so many of those oppress you rightly refuse to lose memory of your forked tongue as they find their way and discard yours. It's deep. I call it impacted lies. When you know that you lying to me. You know you telling me a lie. And you keep on making up more lies and pile on top of it. I'll never forget the day when I was doing my thesis for my master's in sacred literature, I'll never forget the day I came across some information here, thanks to conscious warrior scholars. And, and when I came across this information, I went back to the seminary, uh, the president of my seminary, Dr. Rogers. And I said to Dr. Rogers, I said, Dr. Rogers, why isn't this information included in the curriculum for masters in sacred literature? He looked at me and said, you don't need to know that. <laughs> Bells with the ringing. <laughs> then he said, that information, and I quote him, that information is not a requirement for a degree from this institution. <laughs> Liars. So in other words, Dr. Robinson and one of the greatest seminaries in this country, Trinity Theological Seminary, you are telling me that this stuff that you taught me is what I'm supposed to teach my people? But I'm bringing evidence to you that contradicts what y'all are teaching me and you telling me that I don't need to know this? Are y'all getting this, y'all? <laughs> you see, I was supposed to be a safe preacher. I was supposed to teach you what the oppressor taught us. As most preachers are doing. I got to keep it real. Isn't it deep, man? You got to get their permission to be ordained. And how you get ordained, you got to pass their exam and answer their questions like they want it answered. So they'll see if you're brainwashed enough to stand behind the podium and to continue to poison the minds of your people. Yeah. I was there. I was there. I can't knock many of the brothers because the mind can't teach what it doesn't know. But it's deep, brothers and sisters, when you have told so many lies on top of each other over the centuries that to tell the truth about one of your earlier lies would unravel all the, y'all, oh my God, can y'all imagine what would happen? Yeah, I mean, 
you know what, actually, to be honest with you, I started to say, can y'all imagine what would happen if they would start admitting that they've lied? I started to ask that, but you know what, they are admitting it. All you got to do is look at the History Channel, look at the Discovery Channel, read Newsweek magazine, and you'll see them telling you right there, in search of Jesus. In search of Noah's Ark. Is it possible that Moses and Abraham didn't exist? They're telling you. But you know it's deep. They have they know. Oh, this is some deep stuff. Grab how deep this goes. They grab how deep this goes. They know that the, their lie has been ingested so deeply and so strongly that they can now come and tell you that they lied to you and then you turn around and say, you lying. <laughs> you know you lying, eh? That Satan the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> they telling you they made this stuff up. But they know that you love the lie. Oh, man. They know that you love it so much that you need it. Are y'all grabbing what I'm saying? They have glamorized their lie so well that you absolutely have no idea what you would do without it. Make no mistake about it, brothers and sisters. The liars know exactly what they have done and what they are doing. They're not stupid. They know that they must never tell you the truth about yourself. They know that they must never tell you the truth about how great you are. Africans, they know they must never tell you that mathematics came from you. They must never tell you that agriculture came from you. They must never tell you that horticulture came from you. They must never tell you that music, the arts, everything came from Africans. They must never tell you that because if they tell you that, you just might develop some self-esteem. develop some self-esteem, if you develop some character and pride about who you are, guess what? We'll stop drinking. We'll stop the drugs. We'll stop killing each other. We'll stop destroying our families. We'll empty out the prisons if we ever find out who we are. This country will go belly up. They will lose all their power. So make no mistake about it, brothers and sisters, they cannot ever, ever tell you that they lied to you. They might not be able to tell you that they lied to you, but damn it, I sure can. I can tell you. I can tell you because number one, I was trained in their lie. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I was one of their scholars. And my assignment was to continue to make zombies out of my own people. But oh my God, the ancestors, God Almighty had mercy on me and rescued me from the assignment of death to my people. You see, brothers and sisters, everybody repeat after me, freedom, freedom. comes with knowledge. Comes with knowledge. <laughs> Say it again, freedom, freedom. comes with knowledge. Comes with knowledge. <laughs> That's why religion doesn't want you to know. 
any religion, they don't want you to know. They want you to believe. All religions, it's about faith. It's about believing. You can't validate one thing you've been taught from a pulpit. You have to believe it by faith. Everybody repeat after me. Faith, faith. is belief, belief. in unverified thought. I guess y'all thought I was going to quote the Bible and say faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's a dumb statement. That's a real, that's one of the dumbest statements in human existence. Now follow me, I don't mean to be insensitive, I'm serious about that. Just think about, what, see we quote verses without giving it thought. Think about what you're saying. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope never comes. You never get hope. Because if you get hope, then there won't be no more hope. If it ever comes, there won't be no more hope, right? So faith is the substance of what you don't have. It's the evidence, hear this part, now this is really the this is the dumbest part of the sound. It's the evidence of what you don't see. That's really deep, Dad, because I'm having a flashback right now. I'm having a flashback when I used to say, Faith! Oh, faith! Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And the audience is like, yeah! <laughs> Man. Do y'all see how I was chemicalizing, creating a mental side among our own people? Freedom comes with knowledge. Now, grab what I'm about to tell you because this is very important. The reason why religion can never allow you to have knowledge is because it will make you free. And once you become free, religion loses its power. Y'all getting what I'm saying? You see, a person's dependence ends, it literally stops. Once you acquire the knowledge that the preacher has that you don't have, you no longer need the preacher. That's why I tell people, I'm not a preacher, I'm a teacher. You get this? You see? As long as you don't know, the preacher can always say, well, daughter, <laughs> let me tell you what God told me. The Lord absolutely told me to tell you that you need to be here at church every time the doors open. If you, if you want your blessing, Put God first. Have anybody ever hear anything like what I'm saying? Put God first. And you know what? Because we don't know any better, we can't understand that what he's really saying is put me first. Put the church first. Anybody with the right heart. Oh my goodness will let you know God as they want you to see it never comes before your family everybody do this everybody do this 
and repeat after me. Repeat after me. The space inside this circle, space inside this circle represents, my represents my realm of knowledge. Now I'm asking y'all to do this because some of y'all sitting there looking at me like this. Say it again. The space inside this circle represents my realm of knowledge. All that I think I know is represented right here inside this circle. I must keep in mind that there is more to know than what is within my tiny circle. Y'all getting this? Well said. I'm shaking. I'm shaking foundations right now, and I and I see it. But you know what, brothers and sisters? It, 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 I'm telling you the truth, and your spirit knows that I'm telling you the truth. It's your brainwashing that's having a problem with it. I can see some people sitting there saying. You're telling the truth, though. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I... Mm, mm. The liars! The global elite know that you are great. And they have molded a society. Hear what I'm saying. They have molded a society. i say that again. They the ruling elite have molded a society. You didn't even know they were doing it. Because first of all, you don't think people got that much power. And the reason why you don't think people can have that much power is because you don't have that much power. But there is a very, very powerful entity out here. I call it the devil. Okay? But the devil, I, but the devil has an identity. And it's not a red dude with a pointed tail and a trident in flames walking around behind him with little black demons. Now if y'all notice, think, think in your mind, think in your mind. All of the pictures you've seen of demons, they're always painted black. That ought to tell you something right there. And angels are painted white. That ought to tell you something. The people who have designed policy, have created an environment that's destroying us and we're playing right into it because we don't know what's going on. Many people don't want to know. You see, brothers and sisters, everybody say historiography. historiography. Now, I don't know if you, let me put, define what that word is. Historiography. History. His story, his story, graphic or graphic, meaning to write down. Y'all got me? Okay, so European historiographers put down what they want us to believe. They wrote it, they documented it. And they put their strategies in literature and taught it to us as children. And they knew that their historiography would have a devastating effect on us. For example, let me, let's go all the way back to way back when you were in school. How many of y'all remember Dick, Jane, Sally, and Spot? Y'all remember them stories in school? Dick, Jane, Sally, and Spot. As a little black boy in school, I used to read about Dick. Jane, Sally, and Spock and wonder when am I ever going to get to experience the life that I'm reading about. Dick, Jane, Sally, and Spock, they were a family with a picket fence around their house. I lived in the projects. I didn't have a dog named Spock. I didn't even have a sister. Only person who was there was me and my mama. How are we, how am I going to identify with this story that I'm reading in school? I don't see me in it. That's 
but yet I became frustrated with my own existence because I thought that that is what I should be living but I'm not living it am I making sense family What's deep is when they created their historiography, they didn't know how long it would affect us. But it has affected us for quite a while. Repeat after me. It is important. It is important. Come on, say it like you mean it. It is, it is important, it is important. For, us to for us to realize that we cannot, and, we cannot and, will not and will not find ourselves. Find looking to the religious system given to us by those who have lied to us. Look at somebody near you and say, exercise some common sense. Now here's the common sense, I'm going to give it to you, you deal with it. If you were sitting in a restaurant Grab this. If you were sitting in a restaurant and the waiter who came to serve your table was digging in their nose and looked at you with disrespect and came to you and said, what do you want? Are y'all seeing this picture? <laughs> Would you allow them to bring you food? No, you wouldn't. Not if you got any sense. In fact, you'd look at the person there with you, unless you're unless you there by yourself, and say, come on, baby, let's get up out of here. Let's get up out of here. No, we ain't eating here. Not today, we're not, we not eating here. You have no problem seeing that, but yet you will allow the people and the descendants of those people who lynched your great uncle, who gut cut your pregnant grandmother, who snatched the womb out of your sister at an early age. You will allow these people to give you a message that is supposedly to save your soul. Well, well, come on. Impossible. Impossible. What's the difference? Same thing. Exercise common sense and know that those who would lie to you would never, ever give you what you need for your empowerment. Brothers and sisters, we've been assaulted for almost 3,000 years. We have followed the teachings and believed the historiography of the liars and it has resulted, it has resulted in us as black people living in pain. I don't know a people on this planet that love the Lord more than black folk do. I don't know a people on this planet that go to church more than we do. We go to church more than we go to work. I'm serious. And we'll support the church before we pay our bills. We followed their teachings. We believed their historiography. And, it, and, and I look at my people and I see us in pain. Yes. I see us desolate. I see us filled with grief. I see us living in bitterness and self-hatred and rage and blind hopelessness and self-destruction. Yes. Yes. The process begins when we're children. And it carries on into adulthood. Brothers and sisters, for the past 400 years, for the past 400 years, we have worked harder in this country 
than any other race of people in this country. And we still suffer from the most deplorable conditions than anybody else in this country. We have the lowest income rate. We have the highest unemployment rate. We have the highest crime rate. The lowest health rate. The fastest death rate. The highest homicide rate. The highest dysfunctional family rate. The highest drug and alcohol addiction rate. And it goes on and on and on and on. And yet. We're waiting for that great getting up morning. <laughs> in that great getting up morning, fare you well, fare you well. In that great getting up morning, fare you well, fare you well. In that great getting up morning, fare you well, fare you well. In that great. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, black people make up about 15% of the population of the United States of America. Did y'all hear what I said? But according to the CDC, black people make up 53% of the population that's infected with AIDS and HIV. 77% of the total number of reported cases of sexually transmitted diseases. 77%. As of January 26, 2012, and I don't like saying dates because it dates my message, but it's okay, I gotta get this out. As of January 26, 2012, how long ago was that? few weeks ago, right? As of January 26, 2012, a study conducted by the Violence Policy Center declared that St. Louis, Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri leads the nation in the highest homicide rate for blacks for the second year in a row. The study goes on to say that within St. Louis City borders alone, St. Louis City borders, out of 143 murders that occurred last year, out of 140, and I promise you, I think way more than that, but out of 140, this is what they document, out of 143 mur murders that occurred last year, 125 of them were black folk. You see, brothers and sisters, I'm just giving y'all symptoms. I'm not really telling you the problem. See, the problem is that we hate ourselves. That's the problem. The problem is that we fear trusting one another. And you see, you got to understand, once you hate yourself, and you fear trusting your brothers and sisters, it prevents unity. If I hate myself, ain't no telling what I'll do to you. If I don't trust you, we will never ever come together, but we're going to keep on praying that one day, It'll get better. The Quran says in the 13th surah, the 11th verse, it says, Allah will not change the condition of a people until they first change it themselves. So the only way it's going to get better is if we stop waiting on Jesus and Obama. <laughs> To make it better. Once you understand, ain't nobody coming to save you. 
then you'll stop hoping and you'll get busy doing what needs to be done in your environment to make a difference. It's a contradiction to our genetic memory bank. Doggone it, wait a minute, hold on here. I'm talking about a people who built structures on this planet thousands of years ago that are still standing there. Monuments for all eternity. We did that. And now we can't even get along with each other. You think one person built the pyramids by themselves? It took unity. I'm talking about stones that are at least two tons a piece. It took working together. It took believing in each other. It took trusting each other in order to accomplish this magnificent feat. Now we can't even own a grocery store in the community together. We must correct our perception. We must correct our perception about the liars. And then we must correct our perception about ourselves. Every one of us has a perspective or a perception in our head of something or someone. And you, uh, perspectives, if I can say this, it's, it's divided into two categories. Perspectives of the thing, of the way things are, and perspectives of how you want them to be. Many of us have closed our eyes to the way things are, and we keep hoping for the way we want things to be. That's called living a dream. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Very few people stop to question the accuracy of their perspective. In fact, we're usually even unaware that we have the perspective that we do because we grew up with it. Ask yourself the question. Has what been put in my head, is it really working? for me and my community. Is it really working? I don't think so. In fact, I know not. All you gotta do is go out front and ride up and down Newstead. Just ride throughout the black community. The two things you will see more of than anything else is churches, and liquor stores. Both of them are doing the same thing to our people, intoxicating them. I'm sorry if I'm offending you, but you may never hear my voice again. And I got to tell you the truth. Look at what's happening to us as a people. When you've been made to put your trust in a concept that your oppressor fabricated for you to give you a bit of joy in time of sorrow. You'll never get any better. When you've been made to put your faith in a lawyer in a courtroom that ain't gonna show up for the hearing. You'll never get any better. When you've been made to put your faith in a mother for the motherless who ain't gonna ever put their arms around you and hold you at night. And if you do feel some arms around you, holding you at night is Jesus. Everybody repeat this and I close. Repeat this. The way I see things is the source of the way I think and act. Brothers and sisters, how your mind has been conditioned affects your perceptions. 
of whether or not you're going to reach your destination. So I close with these questions. Where do you want to go? Think about it. Where do you want to go? And how do you want to get there? You decide. If you want to stay like Alice in Wonderland and keep on doing what you've been doing. <clears throat> and sooner or later you'll see how deep that rabbit hole goes. But if you want to get back to reality, which is the first step in making a difference in your life, then stop believing and start knowing. Don't be afraid of the forbidden fruit. What do you mean, Brother Ray? The forbidden fruit is evil. Adam died because he ate the forbidden fruit. See what I'm saying? You see that historiography you've been believing? Let's look at it. For those who have not heard this, let's look at this for a moment. Let's look at this for a moment. According to the Bible that we all grew up on, the Bible says these words, of every tree in the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of knowledge thou shalt not eat of that tree for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die doesn't the Bible say that come on talk to me third chapter of Genesis it says that you've been thinking the forbidden fruit is an apple no it's knowledge You can eat of every tree in the garden except the tree of knowledge. What kind of God doesn't want you to know the God that the oppressor has presented to you? Our ancient African ancestors knew that knowledge is power. And once you acquire that power, you'll change your existence. But as long as you're ignorant, you have to just keep on hoping that things are going to get better. Look at somebody and say, stop listening, stop listening to the liars. The liars. Ashe. Ashe.